Welcome back to the channel, guys. Uh, welcome to another episode of Mark and Mitch Make a Scientology Film. Um, let's get Mitch in here right now and see. Uh, hey, there Mark. he is. Hey, Mitch. How's it going? Fantastic. Good to see you. I've really been looking forward to this day. It feels like it's all been leading up to this. <laughs> oh, my good. We have such a one. We have such a crazy film for you guys today. Um, the name of this film um, and those of you who are new or this is the first episode you're seeing, um, Mitch was the director at Golden Air Productions who was hired by Scientology to direct um, these internal Scientology training films. And I was what uh, in, within the Sea Org is called the shoot crew chief or the pre-production director or the producer or any of those different posts when these films were being produced. So both of us were intimately involved in the pre-production, the shoot production and the post-production and the, the distribution of these films. Yeah, we were in um, the trenches. So we know, um, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, warn you that we are going to quote dialogue of films that we shot 20 years ago. And that is how involved we were is that we, and some of these films we shot, this film that we're going to talk about was actually shot twice. So it was shot because, um, it needed to be done for something that David Miscavige was doing. And then because our, uh, film production techniques and capabilities and studios and equipment, um, progressed over time and the and the films um, could be made even better than we made them in the first round that and then some of the films also had people that were then declared suppressive persons and yeah like Mark Headley no. <laughs> yeah like me myself um, and Larry Anderson and Jason yeah. Begay and Alan Barton and yeah. Carlos Zamudio and pretty much almost all the people that were in these films eventually end up a suppressive person pretty much um, and so this film um, that we're going to talk about today was called EM8, the use of testing and the e-meter. And, and was there something else, the use of testing? And, and yeah, e no, it was. E this is very testing. important. No, this is very important. This is key. Uh, it's really hard to remember these names. Yeah. This just happens to be one I remember very well. Yeah. Uh, because if you recall, just I'm going to take a slight sidebar here. We used to have to word clear these things with a type of word clearing referred to as method nine word clearing, which is one of the most mentally torturous things you will ever be put through, where you have to read out loud the text to another person who's reading along with you. And when you start, they say, if you come across a word or symbol you do not understand, please let me know. And so any, any awkward blink of the eye, scratch of the nose, hesitation, pause, whatever. Stutter. Yeah. Wrong word. Yeah. If you uh, uh, replace yeah. an A with an an or a the with a the or right, that's it. You're out. Right. It, you got to You got to stop. And you have to if you do one any of those things that Mitch said, you have to look up a word in the dictionary. There's no like, oh, yeah, no, I'm good. No, we're looking up a word. You just pick whichever one you want it to be. But it can be one, you know, or one you don't know. But we're looking up a word. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, this, a lot of these. So there's this this this, this very like uh, so a, a line is strung between things that you may do uh, that you are certain about the cause of them. And then they're assigned a different cause. And you're literally in a subtle way bullied into then having to clear these words. It's just torturous. And you're talking about a 30, 40, 50 page script. I'm like, it, it could take day. Like you days. might have to spend, oh. you might have to spend two and a half hours for multiple days day, yeah. to yeah. get like, do, okay, today we got to finish the thing. Okay. We're going to go another two and, and a half And hours. you can't start. It, it, production can't start till everybody's complete. So it's like, you don't want to be the guy who's like, yeah, every single person who works on a film has to do this word clearing. Yeah, they have to do this the guy process. Emptying the trash has to they do have it. to do it before yeah. they work on the film. Yeah. If not, Scientology is threatened worldwide. That's <laughs> well, yes. anyway. So anyway. that's the reason why you remember because you had yeah, to look that's up the reason why I remember. But also the the full definition is very pertinent to how the con is run. This presentation we're doing for you today might as well be a master master class in how to run a con because the the full definition of the the full uh, title of the film is estimating case condition. That's with right. S and the e meter, and it's that estimating the case, which is how the con is run. Yes. That's the, the central thing 
in Scientology gaslighting people into buying fake counseling is because they convince them that they've estimated their case and they understand something intrinsically about them. Right. That they're so that that's sure. Just, and, and this film is this film is actually kind of crazy because it gives you a little glimpse into the con itself yeah, oh, big and it's time. right out in the open. They, right. They're actually showing you how they do it. Oh yeah. And yeah. it's kind of a, they're gleefully kind of playing through it. And the way um, for each film that L. Ron Hubbard wrote, he decided what the motif of the film would be and how and, and sort of kind of how this film's going to get done or what in what um, way we're going to tell it. And in this film, they had it as a sports announcer. So like the guy who's going through this organization and um, talking to all these people is doing it like he is part like a he's a sports like, announcer a sports announcer like it's, for it's like a sports network like literally hey. <laughs> yeah no it's literally based on like abc wild world of sports yes. they got a guy they got a guy on a blazer with gray slacks and he's got a patch on his neck and he's got a microphone which of course the sound department loved that the actor got to hold a microphone yeah because they didn't have to hide their mic <laughs> yeah camera. literally the a prop little... was a, a working prop <laughs> yeah and, 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 and you know it had a little box logo on it with a little a mic gold, flag yeah yeah little little golden era productions and then this guy this this guy and his name is Bert Brent, you know, a real masculine kind of like like sportsy kind of name. Um, yeah. he, he would then take us on a tour. And the thing is, it's it's done gleefully. It's done like nobody say this is how you do the con, because the people watching this that are staff, they believe they've been gaslit to believe that this con is helping people. It's kind of like if I said, hey, Mark, uh, I'm going to teach you how to do a, a, a three card Monty. Right. That yeah. Little, right. Now, I want you to understand this. Every time you get a person to try and guess, you know, which card it is, you're actually bringing them closer to spiritual enlightenment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're we're you're actually, actually you are even, helping though, them. even though it seems like we're tricking them, we're yeah. tricking them into doing the right thing. Yeah, exactly. It's it's like and so this is that con. And so it's all based around this one thing. Can you put up that? uh Yes. Can you put up that? It's it's based. This is the when they say testing. Oops, when they sorry, say hold on. testing, I got a better one here. There we go. They're talking oh. about this. They're talking about the OCA graph. This stands for Oxford Capacity Analysis. I know that there sounds pretty fancy, but this is a BS test that Hubbard like pulled out of his arse. They totally made this up. It yeah. has nothing to do with yeah. Oxford. It has nothing. There's no analysis happening. It's no all, capacity. Yeah. And, and they have capacity. no capacity to tell you anything about yourself. Yes. Yeah, your capacity to be uh, gaslit. Each and one of it, these, um, there's like a, you can see the, there's a minus 100 and there's right. plus 100 on the, on the sidebar of the right. graph. Right. And then along the top, they have A, B, they have all these different, uh, letters and those are tr personality traits right and, then, and if you look if you look at the right read can you read these things on the right it says desirable normal undesirable yeah uh, and it looks very scientific does it not and one of the things that Hubbard wrote about is that people love taking iq tests and personality tests and you'll notice all over the internet you'll see take personality tests do not from Scientology, but from just, you know, s slick marketers who yeah. understand that it's a great way to harvest email addresses and the people they want to, you know, find out if you're a psychopath. I'm seeing all kinds of new ones. Only a sociopath can solve this puzzle. Yes. All of that stuff plays into this basic human nature of wanting to do some kind of test. People to like to be tested to know to yeah. attach a significance to their knowledge or their personality or these yeah, things. there's even a line in the film about people love to be tested yeah so he made up this bs test and i just want to uh I and it to doesn't it doesn't matter um what the graph says if the graph is good then there's a reason why it's good and you're not confronting your problems and you're not acknowledging that you have problems and that's why you're abnormally high on the graph and if you're low on the graph it's because um uh oh you're you're now you're yeah, about no, to no, send no. us to your stream yard no I, um, I i did something really stupid i'm very sorry anyway okay. i i put another um did I put another one up there? No, I think I, I, I let me here. No, it was this. in the second. It was in the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I screwed that up. I'm I, It's I'm, all good. I'm not. I'm not fast. You, while you it. figure that out, I'll tell the yeah, rest of ahead. this. Yeah, please. So the way that this um, 
OCA, the Oxford Capacity Analysis um, test works is they have you answer 200 questions and when you answer that to those 200 questions it puts you into a preset category where they have a, an already pre-written pattern that they read you based on what the different scores are and it, it's so um pre-formulated and canned that it's all computerized now so if you right. do one of these tests in an organization, they just it's all it's like a, it's it's it has a OCR uh, where they can recognize the text right. and see which one you filled out. And then the computer just spits out the exact thing that they're supposed to tell you. Right. And then when the person who's trying to sell you Scientology courses or services, they just read the pattern right off of the computerized printout. And I would say. I don't know, 80% of the time, it's going to get you. It's going to get somebody. It's yeah. going to seem yeah. It's going to seem like they've somehow gained insight right. into your personality, right. even though right. you filled out the form that gave them all the things that is the insight. Yeah, so. and, there, and we'll, we'll get to the actual real illustrations in the film. But first, if you could put this up, Mark, I'd like to yeah. show the audience uh, some of the questions. Like These are just random questions. This is on a... Uh, we'll link to this in the bottom of the, of, the, of the deal where the links are. But these are some of the questions here in the Wikipedia article. They've actually picked out some really cool ones. It says things like, do you browse through railway timetables, directories, or dictionaries just for pleasure? Do you get occasional twitches of your muscles when there is no logical reason for it? Do you often sing or whistle just for the fun of it? Now, these are things that I'm telling you everybody at one time or another is going to pick up a dictionary or a timetable or a random something because they're in the doctor's office and they're totally bored and they're going to thumb through it. So it's like, and, but, but the thing is, significance is going to be signed to these kinds of things. Uh, and do you often make tactless blunders? <laughs> well, I never do, but people tell me I do all the time. So. <laughs> I've never made a, I've never, never. Even made a mistake. I don't even know. In all the years I've known you, that. you're perfect. <laughs> so anyway, that's that. So, um, Here's one, another thing to understand. The way that they deploy these is every major church, like Ideal Org, is supposed to have what's called a test center, right? Yes, or, and it doesn't have to be part of the organization. It, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's usually yeah. Thing. Sometimes it is, but in the in the bigger organizations like LA and and so forth, there are separate buildings. Like, if if you want to put this picture up, Mark, there. This is a picture of the one on uh, Hollywood Boulevard. Wait, I didn't. I, I don't think I shared this. Let me just share this real quick. Okay, it's all good. Sorry, guys, we had this as a deck. And then when that first one kind of crumbled, it, uh, our whole system went away. So, uh, um, yeah, they have one. It's, um, it's right near Hollywood and Highland. Yeah, there it is. I got it up. And um, this, is the, um, this is the Hollywood Test Center. Um, they right. call it the, I think they call it the Information Center. Yeah, they call now. it the Information Center, and you can go in there and you can save video, all kinds of videos. You can take some basic courses, but the real um, the, the real purpose that exists is so they can do these tests. And if you've seen guys walking around in their, their, uh, their hotel hostess-looking uniforms, handing out invitations to come and take an IQ test or a personality test, that's where the con begins. Or a ticket to a film. Or a ticket to a film. Because they have us film that some of these films that we made, they use that as an introduction film to kind of they tell you a whole bunch of something without telling you anything. Yeah, you, you still left with questions. And then when you're done, they say, oh, if you've got any more questions, we've got a course that'll tell you every, how everything works, yeah. or, you know, or they'll do the test. Then now that they've got you in the building, right. now they'll get you to do one of these tests. Right. So, the yeah, the con begins out on the street with the, with these people and they're doing what is called body routing. And the idea is for them, they hand out these tickets, but ideally they'd actually get someone and they'd escort them back and they would bring them in. And that's referred to as body writing. So in the first sequence in this film, uh, Mr. Burt Brent, he goes to the test center and he talks to the, I guess he's the executive director would be his post. Executive director of the, of the, the when the actor playing Burt Brent, when he goes into the test center yeah, and he speaks to the guy, what, what would that guy's post be? I think it would be like executive director. Yeah, because he says, let me introduce you to the team. And oh, yeah, he... it's a, the team. Everything is sports language. And then he says, hey, I haven't seen you since flag. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, I was uh, was traded for two 
you know, yeah. this and of that. And yeah, like all- they're talking about he like the guy, the Burt guy, got traded to another team or, or which another which totally org. happens, which yeah, totally happens it does all the time. Totally happen. But it's not a sports thing. It's just like oh, by anyway, the way, so you're, by, yeah, yeah, you're never going to see your wife again. We're trading you. <laughs> yeah. The, so the executive director, he says, oh, we wanted to find out how you guys use testing. And, da, da, da. and then the executive director goes, well, you know what? It's funny you should say that because the whole team's on deck today. Let me introduce you to them. Yeah. And then he takes them to each one. And he goes, this is our, our he, yeah, each he, person he brings like, no, oh, he says is, if you He says, if you want to understand testing, you're going to have to see it in action. You yes. know, it's a fast play, you know, and that like, all uh, starts over at the test center. Well, no, but he, yeah, but they are in the test center for at that yeah. point. So That's then right. he, go, he goes in and he, and he goes into the testing room. Doesn't and he, he talk- run to somebody on the, he actually runs to him on the steps outside the test center. Right. Remember, we shot it on location yeah. on those steps. Oh, Doesn't yeah, yeah, he yeah, run yeah. into somebody there? I think that's yeah. where they have the conversation. Yeah, he I does. can't remember. We shot yeah. the film twice, and we did. Yeah, it's, we it's changed slight things between each one of them. Yeah, it's kind of like, was that my first wife or my second? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, that was my last wife. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, anyway, he goes in the testing room, and you can you know, imagine a bunch of tables with those big timers with buttons on the top like they have in, in, in dark rooms oh, for you know right. timing printing yes. and development. I forgot and, and about those. Keep in mind that this film is also very detailed because the orgs are going to expect to be studying this intensively and deploying everything they're seeing. So they take you through the whole testing line. And then after the testing line, they go into you go in to meet the test evaluators. So like the guys out on the street doing the body routing, that's not a very skilled job. They need to be personable. And then the guys giving the test, that's not a very skilled job. Now you're getting into real fraudsters, these what are called test test evaluators, right? And so what's going to happen is when your test comes out, they're going to call your name and they're going to, they're going to walk you over and seat you down with somebody and they're going to have your test there, right? <laughs> they're they're going to have your, your Google AdSense account. Yeah, they're going to have your Google AdSense. Yeah, <laughs> they're going to have your Google AdSense account confirmation. Um, yeah, whatever that was me- that was Mitch's pin that they sent him in yeah, the mail. Yeah. That was the second one they sent me because I screwed the first one up, and that's hard to do. Okay, <laughs> really, <laughs> really hard to do. Um, <laughs> but, oh boy! So they're going to sit down with you, right? And they're going to say that they've got your test results right here. And believe it or not, the first mark is an elderly woman. That's believe right. it or not, her oh, name, <gasps> Mark. What was her it's name? Do Mrs. You remember? Brown Mrs. is her name, Brown. and I they it, and it was played by a woman named Natalie Fisher, who arguably was, was the it? oldest person yeah. on the property, yeah. Yeah. and she played the part perfectly because she's just sitting there. Yeah, so the first her. person that she they, has no idea what's going yeah. on. The first person they choose to abuse is an elderly woman named Mrs. Brown, okay, which is so pretentious in terms of what's going to happen in the future. And so the test yeah. evaluator picks it up and says, now, Mrs. Brown, now what Mark said earlier about why the test is evaluated by a computer and spit out, so there would be a note on there based on the re- test results that might say accident prone, right? Yep. So the test evaluator says to Mrs. Brown, and Mrs. Brown, it says here you're accident prone. And this really introverts the poor woman. She's like, oh. I do get into accidents. Yeah, I do have accidents. She says, now, Mrs. Brown, at reading another one of these things, sometimes takes on more than they can handle. She says, Mrs. Brown, do you sometimes take on more than you can handle? Bingo. She's completely interiorized, introverted, reaches for a purse, pulls out a credit card, buys a course. But don't they say, don't you think that the reason you might have accidents is because you try to take on take more on than, more you, than can you can handle? So and yeah, they, therefore you have the yeah. accidents. And then the and the the, right. the elderly woman is like, oh my god, mind blown. Yeah, this and is then genius. she gets out her purse, and then you know they charge probably one hundred fifty thousand to it. But yeah. um, <laughs> well, no, they charge her twenty five in the for film. The course, but yeah. then they take her credit card when she's not looking, and they put another hundred and fifty grand on. Oh gosh. <laughs> So then, anyway, okay, so there's then, other things in this film that are very yeah. kind of crazy yeah. that are also very weirdly coincident to things that are happening in, in current so times. Then the camera dollies from right to left and stops on the next table and the next evaluator and the next sucker played by Barrett. Barrett. 
Was it Barrett? Yes. Is that the yeah. next one? And that's Barrett, the one where Kelly never Daniels. Ending story. Yes. Oliver. Yeah. Yes, that's right. And so Barrett's there and he's this cute, you know, t- early 20 something kid with a ball cap and, a, you know, a baseball jacket, right? Because it's all sports, right? And he's sitting there and he's listening. He's kind of resistive. He's, his body language is kind of very resistive. And, and all you pick up is the end of the conversation. And it's something, I don't totally remember. It's something like, well, do you think if you did something different, the girls might treat you differently? Like she's yes. literally pushing says, his button about girls. Well, she says, do you, do the girl, do, is that, no, he says something and he says, do you tell that to all the girls? Oh and yeah, then that's he goes, it. And then he goes, no, um, they don't really give me the time of day or whatever. Yeah, and then yeah, she yeah, says, yeah. maybe if you didn't do this, this, and this, you'd have better luck with the girls. And yeah. then he gets out his wallet. Yeah, so then they, yeah, literally a credit card slaps down on the desk. And, and so <laughs> this is just, you know, it told you, the, the thing is, is when you're in there and doing it, and of course, I directed the film, Mark helped produce the film, he ran the crew while we shot the film, and we and mined it, and we read all the references, and we really believed it at the time. But then when you come out and you take that red, red pill, which not everybody does, and you really get out of the matrix, and you look back at it, and you see that you were like, oh, so this is the three-chord money, cool, next. So yeah. it's pretty crazy. And that and and to be clear, that's the whole reason we're doing this, guys. That's the whole reason we're telling the story of these films because people ask, well, what's Scientology? How are they convincing these people? There's so many different um, paths of this sort of programming that happens throughout every strata and every cast of Scientology that it's very, very complicated. And so we're just documenting how we have seen that this happens. Yeah, but this, Mark, this is the core con. Th- this this is, is the this, core con. This lays period. out exactly yeah. how they bamboozle people into yeah. Scientology. Yeah, because this if, film you can, if you can convince a person, yeah, if you can convince a person that you understand their vulnerabilities, the things that they're afraid to confront, and you can help them with them, and you're willing to do so, you can really hook a lot of people in. And, th- and this is ex- precisely how they do it. So then, um, let me see, after the, uh, so that's the, t- that's the basic testing lot. Now you've routed a person on the c- course, right? You've, you've routed the, you've got them to take a course. And then he, I don't remember the exact sequence. Well, you, he got, he goes, so, so the announcer goes, so then we're good. That's when all the tests are done. And then the yeah. guy goes, no, no, no. That's just the first string. That's right. just the first round. Right. When the person completes the course. They redo all these tests again. And this is the this is another part. Right, right. Where, but hold on, hold on, hold on, hold yeah. on. Because we're both kind of like breaking through our memory barriers here. <laughs> yeah. That's right. There there's the after there's the after you finish auditing, you get retested and then that con keeps going, stays with you all the way up the quote unquote bridge of total freedom. But yeah. they also remember they went out on the street. Yes, to go see to, how body routing works. How they're getting them in. Right. And so he goes to see the head registrar okay because now keep in mind this the team that runs this con they're the body routers out on the street there's the guys giving the test they're the people evaluating the test and then you've got people in what they call the qualify then you have the registrar who's taking the money uh for services and getting them onto courses and then you have people evaluating the test i mean uh, uh, distributing the test and then you have what's called the director of uh, uh, processing the yes. dfp who is figuring out with the case supervisor how much additional fake counseling you need to buy and then you have a support team behind them you have yeah. some really important players in this con like you have the that's the, the one where we show with tate right because doesn't yeah tate- well that he's the test marker in the org but doesn't he say in there, um, and then you give that to blah blah He yeah. goes, oh, no, no, we give it to this person and this yeah. person and this person. Yeah. He tells that they yeah, yeah, give yeah. those tests to a whole set of different people yeah, so what, they can all uh, kind of hit them from different angles yeah, to but get them the to real, buy Yeah, stuff. but here's the key one, okay? So keep yeah. them, we're, we're going to jump back to another thing, but here's a key one. So, yeah, so he goes and he sees this testing person. I forget the guy's post, but his job is basically – to take the final t- graded test and make copies of it. And, and he explains to the guy, one copy goes into the person's PC folder. 
which is the precur folder. That's the one, counseling record yeah, of that person for one, all of their sessions go into these folders. Yeah, yeah. Every time you finish an action in Scientology, you take a brand new OCA test to keep this thing going. And, it, and also uh, you take an IQ test yeah. and you take a leadership test. So they have a, a and there's yeah. another one, an aptitude test. There's four tests, yeah. OCA, IQ, leadership, and aptitude. And each time you do a counseling session or you finish a bunch of counseling or you finish a course in Scientology, they want to have you retake those tests and then the tests um, change and then they go, oh, see, you're making progress. Yeah, they're always going to be better. And then it's, it's a part of the scam. So it begins with finding your ruin, finding the thing that you want to fix, right? Identifying it. And the fact that they can identify it is, is rationale enough to, to, to get you on board to charge you money. And then after you take the, the courses, you take the test again and they go, look, it's improved. It's up, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah. So anyway, so so one of the tests goes to the Preaker folder. One of them goes to the PC. One of them goes, uh, I don't remember. But then he says, and this one goes to the registrar. And he's like, registrar? Why would you send a test? Of the, the after, this is the after session test. This is when the person finishes. In other words, the registrar show, sold them something. And then after they complete it, the registrar sees a test. And I kid you not, the test guy says, well, because he, he's asked, why do you send the after test, the after auditing test to the reg? And he says, because if the regs don't see the after test, they think they're selling hot air or a part of a con game. Okay. Those are literally Hubbard's words. Selling hot air, part of a con game. Because this their certainty is has to be bolstered by seeing a fake test so yes. that they believe they're doing something good. Because the, Hubbard knew, Hubbard he knew. knew he already ran this yeah. through and he figured out if we don't yeah. do this extra thing, then people think it's a con because he was sued and accused yeah. of being a con man early yeah. on. Yeah. And so he was like, I got to figure out a way so they don't think that. And this is how this testing um, uh, module is how they, yeah. how he, how he's justifying it to himself. This will right. make it so they don't think it's a con. It gets worse. It gets worse as the film goes on. And so, yeah, he literally, it's one of my favorite lines from any film. You got to show them the after test because if you don't, they'll think they're they're running a con or and they're selling the hot air or that running says, a con. That Tate says. Yeah. Tate Rupert. Yeah. Yeah, he's yeah, the yeah, one. Yeah. He's that test admin, testing yeah. admin. That's what yeah, his post was. Yeah, the test was. admin. That's what it is for administration. So at one point, I don't remember if it's before that or after that. He goes and talks to Mabel. I just remembered her name, Mabel. She's the head reg. That was Denise Stuff. Denise Stuff, yes. Yes, who is a, a person who, if she had spent the money she spent on Scientology and the time she invested in Scientology and her career, you would very likely know who she is. Yeah, um, she does a lot of vampire. Uh, no, or... she did one in like three no. years ago. Okay. I, uh, yeah, Denise I'm, Stuff? I, yeah, she no, she does a lot of sea sea horror films. Yeah, Vampire no, she's films. very very famous for that. Oh, she okay. goes to con, uh, the cons and yeah, uh, Fangoria, cons I think and, it's called. Yeah, she's like very popular. Oh, yeah, so you're gonna probably see her on TikTok around Halloween. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and she's also very close friends. Her best friend is, uh, you know, oh, I can't think of the thing, but it's so embarrassing. You know, the soap star who nobody ever talks Michelle about. Michelle Stafford. Michelle Stafford, who's like a one of the biggest soap stars of all time is an OTA Scientologist given tens of millions of dollars to the church. And somehow people yeah, are like, she fly below the radar. I don't know. I meant, I thought we'd use this as an excuse to bring her up. Oh. I got nothing against Michelle. Have Personally, she, I don't remember. Denise was, was she, a dear friend. I think we used her maybe for like an auditor. Oh, are you PC. kidding? The first film Michelle Stafford ever did was, was with Golden Era Productions. Yeah. We she, used her back yeah, in the she day. She was the in back in the day. The first film Michelle Stafford ever did was, um, uh, assessment TRs, TR11. Which okay. We'll get to that film. We, okay. we, we, yeah, she did. And then she was the it girl in How the E-Meter Works. That's right. With Tate and Michael Fairman. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And then she went off into, I think she was on, is it? She became a star. Days of Our Lives, I think. Yeah, she's been on like Days of Our Lives forever. Some she's big, like, or, or The Young and the Restless, or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. She's it's huge. I mean, I used big, 
I cannot ones. remember checking out in a supermarket without seeing her picture on a soap magazine. Yeah, it's just that's I, but true. nobody ever talks about her. She's managed to. She has a really good press agent, like like uh, like uh, Ashley Kutcher and Mila Kunis. They should be phoning Michelle Stafford's <laughs> press agent. Yeah, like, I think that ship has already sailed for them. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I think they that's should a, have. Yeah, they should. Yeah, have. yeah, they should have spoken to her. Anyway, Michelle, wish you luck. Hope you find your way to a yeah to a, a more rational world. Um, and the same for you, Denise, because we were very close friends. And I often would think, you know, she's so talented. Her husband is a very talented musician. And these guys, there's a number of them. Uh, you know, we should do a video about it sometime. Because I tell you, these guys, uh, if they had just spent that time and that money investing in their community and their own careers, they would have gotten so much farther in life. than Well, than that's. I would argue that that's the case with a lot of Scientologists. Well, including myself. Including yeah. <laughs> if you were just shooting, uh, you know, Whatever. commercials this whole time, then, uh, you know, you'd be in a whole other space. Yeah, I would be in a different echelon. But, um, yeah, be that. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, so. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. Yeah, woulda, coulda, shoulda. Yeah. <laughs> like, if wishes were fishes, we'd all have a fry. Okay. So, anyway. Um, so, he goes and visits Denise. Yeah, I'm sorry, Mabel. And uh, she explains uh, somebody tells her that to go out on the street, to yes. where to go to see because it's happening. He goes there and the chief reg is, is out body rounding as out body rounding because they ran out of people inside the org. And he's like, I got to come out here. Right. We got to switch. Had... We got to be. They, he says some dumb sports. Yeah, thing. Yeah, you gotta, yeah, yeah. So... You got you got the play. You might sometimes you got to call an audible. And you got to get out no, there. No, I, I, I'm uh, unfortunately, Mark. I remember the line, um, so um, I'm experiencing a, a, a kind of a syndrome uh, called Mark Headley memory, where every remember yeah, where specific things are coming details. Back to yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's, he's he's he wants to talk to the chief wretch, and so the the guy in charge who he's his, he's been talking to says, "Oh, well, she's out. Well, what's the what's the she's out on the street body riding. What's the senior wretch doing body riding? Well, there's nobody. The testing is jammed up, and there's nobody in reg. So the reg has come around the side to tackle the flow. Yes, right? and then he says, testing is a fast play." Elastic team tactics. Elastic team tactics. <laughs> yeah. That's right. We used to every and so this is another thing about the films that if they do something like that in the yeah. film, then with now in any organization in Scientology, if there's something like an area is jammed up and they have a backlog right. or they they go, oh, it's time for elastic team oh, tactics, yeah. and then everybody's got to go off of their job and then go do somebody else's job for a few hours. To, to put that right. fire out and then go right. back over to their job. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so team would, tactics. Yeah, oh, my God. Way I totally just, forgot yeah. about that. Yeah. <laughs> and like, you know, I would be, I'd visit orgs all over the world and you see this going on and you hear these terms, elastic team tactics, and you go like, you know, like one day it didn't exist and then it was in a film and we shot it and then it was everywhere. Yeah. And I and that's one of those lines that we used to use to kind of have fun with. Yes. Like, hey, I need to, yeah. Like, it was what they called in Scientology as J and D, joking yeah. and degrading. Yeah. So, like, sometimes you'd be like, "Hey, hold the door, hold the door," and you'd be like, "Come on, dude, I'm I'm already over here now. Come on, Elastic Team Tactics, yeah. reach out, you know, yeah, or something." Yeah, like that. it was really a way to justify you need to get the hell over here right now and help <laughs> yeah. me do my job. So, yeah. Anyway, she goes out. So he goes out and he meets her. And she's, and she's looking for a place to, to body route. And she says, this place will do fine. People mob off the bus, right? Yes. And so this is where they gaslight people in public. You've seen these guys walking around. I mean, today people are like, you know, they're like, well, go the, away. That one, the place, this place here that we showed um, earlier, yeah. um, this one on Hollywood Boulevard, right. that um, location, sorry, I'm just moving everything around. Yeah, that yeah. location, there's usually two or three people standing out that during oh, the yeah, day always, always. Um, trying to get tourists because they're right on Hollywood Boulevard, right oh, yeah. near Hollywood and Highland. So the Wax Museum is a block away and uh, uh, Man's Chinese Starbucks. and all that. Yeah, they're, they're So there's a lot of people, there's a lot of foot traffic, tons and tons and tons of tourists. Mm -hmm. And they're just handing out, oh, do you want to be, you want to see a free film? And you're in Hollywood, and so it's like, oh, we could watch one oh, of these yeah. free films. And there's other people. This yeah, but, is the worst know, part. But there's, there's other people handing out free film tickets too oh, yeah, for yeah. real films. Yeah, or or for the strip show next door to the HGV, 
or for the um, the uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not. Do they hand out? They don't hand out. Uh, they, they do like the. Oh, I was confused. One. I thought when I was in New Orleans, <laughs> when they hand out those tickets, they body rat you with their drag queen yeah. show. Don't um, they also when she, he when he's talking to the body router and then that the says, "Hey, I want to." Um, I'll watch a film like somebody getting off the bus is like, oh, a film. And they're like, yeah. And then like, oh, it's right there in the org. And then the person goes and then the body router looks at the Brent guy and goes, uh, oh, I got to go. And and he goes, well, I thought he's already going there. And he goes, oh, you got to make sure they get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like that's, they, they don't a, take lip service. No, there's a very specific thing which happens a little bit later where Bert Brent is back in the org. And he sees the body router come in and the guy That's is right. walking the guy all the way to his final destination. That's right. And he looks at him quizzically like, and he says, got to make sure they get there. Yes. Like you have to <laughs> literally like turn physically them yes. escort them because yeah, you can't chances say yes. are they're, they're going to come to their senses on the walk over and go yeah. like, what the hell am I doing going into this place? <laughs> yeah. So this was a big shoot for us uh, at the time. This was like, this massive like location grand no, this is like grand in downtown la shut the entire block down hire a bus well didn't hire a bus we used one of the church buses i think we just just painted. hijacked it basically yeah hijacked a bus hey anyway, we need your bus for two days yeah so the you know people go pouring off the bus and uh she stops this one one guy's really in a hurry so she sort of steps right in front of him right just like body blocks him and uh, she tries to talk with him and he says, I'm sorry, I don't have time. I'm really in a hurry. And then she does the most amazing thing. She just kind of like Jedi mind wipes the guy and says, have you ever wondered why you're always in a hurry? Like for one thing, the guy didn't say he was always in a hurry. He just said, That's I'm right. in a hurry. So she completely gaslights this guy and he stops and, it's, and it really gives him pause. And she says, why don't you come on into the organs? See if we can find out. So, Do you remember who that guy was? I remember he was maybe Scandinavian. No, no. Richard Kuhn. He was really? one of the first time we shot it was with Richard Kuhn, and he was one of the gaffers. Oh, right. He was and he's guy. the one getting off the bus. Oh, I don't have time. And he's like, Did All you, right, did right, you ever right. want it? That was Richard Kuhn. I don't remember who we shot it with the second time. Yeah, I think we needed a somebody kind of big because I think Denise was like six foot tall. Yeah. So, you know, you needed like a decent. I don't think Denise did that part. I think that was done by that redhead. There was a cute redhead that did that part. Did you ever wonder? She was the, I thought she was the chief. Oh, judge. I don't, now we're, now we're like. Now we're splitting hairs. You could gaslight me into thinking it was like. Scarlett well, Johansson I do have a thing point. for redheads. So I, yeah. that when no, I yeah, see one, I, I take an extra few pictures. Okay. <laughs> it could have been, I might be confused. It might've been Denise was in the second film. Well, yeah. Been. I don't remember which, and you're maybe right. She may have done that in the yeah, second one. And I don't. But I don't remember the guy who got off the bus in the second one. I only remember who got off the bus in the yeah. first one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's kind of a weird. I'd love to get the footage for both of those films. And just oh, my them, God. If we're, them Sooner together. or later, we're going to get the footage, and we're yeah, going to play inevitable. these back, and we're going to be like, oh, we really. totally uh, mixed them. Like we, we, This will yeah. be a hybrid version of the story. Oh, yeah, we're just re-edited it. Into... We're just mixing two yeah, I, to kind Yeah, of... I mean, to quote Jeff Goldblum's character from Jurassic Park, life yeah. Has finds a way. So, <laughs> Life like, finds a way. Yeah, so <laughs> those films will find their way. Uh, so anyway, what? Let me see. What's next? So next, uh, who does she go? No so next, he's in the org. He's seen the test admin, and then next he goes to see um, the STO. Is that right? I guess staff training as a staff training yes. officer. Yeah, but, yeah. But how they use test in training the staff oh yes yes yeah, yeah. and that was uh, tracy nichols i think played that i don't remember who did it in the first one but yeah i think you're yeah. right it was tracy nichols yeah she, uh, she kind of bailed on her acting career she's a good actress but yeah she decided to become an entrepreneur and became very wealthy doing something else um i'm trying to think i'm just looking here so yeah we oh, get yeah so no but the thing that she does now this is really interesting he interviews her about how they use tests uh, in terms of uh, training and especially in terms of the staff. And he asks specifically, this is something that always stuck in my mind. He very asked her, he asked her very specifically, like, keep in mind, this is L. Ron Hubbard, the source, quote unquote, source. Of R wrote all of this dialogue. Yeah, every word and every word is 
very careful. He's not, nothing is random. So, so like some of these things he's writing out that this is what you need to be doing. Like he'll write things in here to give direction to uh, executives, staff in, in the church. And so when this question that he wrote for the commentator, it, it always stuck in my mind because it, nobody ever did anything about it, ever. And it is, are there tests to help figure out who, if people are fit for their posts? I'm not doing a great job of restating the question, but it, they were basically like an aptitude test. They were like, what, what do you call that when you take a test to see if you're fit for a certain job? Like, you know, I bet you Mike Brown knows because he took these kind of tests for the military where they would test you to find out if you yeah. were at like an aptitude test, if you were suited to be a helicopter I think, pilot. Or I think somebody mentioned it in the in the, um, in the comments that it's called the Minnesota Multifacet Personality Inventory or something like that. That's what they were saying. The OCA oh, no, that's, is that's kind of but they're saying oh, the OCA is kind of similar oh, to that. Fake, oh, no, but I know the one they're referring to. Yeah. That's a, a very legit test that's used by. Um, mental health workers to help evaluate people, yeah. which is peer reviewed. And I know Mike talked about this test because he did it. Yeah, it's, and it's, they it's, told him you would be good at this thing. Yeah, and so that's what he, he ended up doing. Yeah, he he was qualified to be for his aptitude in his education to be a, a, a an aviation mechanic, helicopter mechanic, and then he worked his way up to full blown flight instructor. Yeah. So, but this is a very important question, and especially in this film, because this guy is saying, "Are there tests that you can use to see what staff are fitted for what jobs?" And she says, "No, but we should probably develop some someday." Yeah. Right. And she leaves it at that. Now, one of the things that the Sea Org is really famous for is for putting people on jobs that they are 100 percent not suited for. Oh, full time. It, I would say 98 percent of Sea Org members. Yeah, I was never in the Sea Org. I worked with and lived yeah. with the Sea Org for 30 years. And I yeah. have a very Mitch has no credibility on this. Yeah, issue I have no right credibility now. on this. <laughs> but I can tell you that. There are some of the smartest people I ever met were Sirik members. Some of the dumbest people I ever met were Sirik members. One of the <laughs> things that was consistent was that people were were put on jobs that they were not suited for. And in the Sea Org, you are told you're an OT and you should be able to step into any job and do it as a professional. An operating Thetan. That's what an OT is. Yeah, you're an for. operating Thetan, and you probably... Cause over matter, energy, space, and time. Yeah, and you've probably, you know, uh, driven a backhoe or operated a $400,000 movie camera a trillion times in your past lives. <laughs> not, so, not true, not true. <laughs> those people break cameras. I yeah. know this yeah, for a fact. They, they, <laughs> Sometimes uh, with the backhoe. If yeah. you're lucky, they'll do the yeah. backhoe and the camera in one go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, they we, there were people. To to be fair, Mitch, yeah. usually the way um, the Sea Org is is staffed is that David Miscavige will go to, into an area that he has previously decimated by getting rid of the people <laughs> in that area, and then he'll be right. like, "You guys got a lot of work coming up, but you don't have enough people. This area needs to be manned up now." And right. so if there might be people in other parts of the organization that are on functions that they are sort of uh, t have a, a, a knowledge or some sort of history or uh, experience in doing, just maybe by the fact that they've been on that post for so long, right. they might only be the only one who knows how to do it just because no one else has ever done it. Right. And then he'll take that person and then move them into another area that they are wholly unqualified to do. Right. And then over the years, people in that area might get go to the RPF, the Rehabilitation Project right. Force, or Escape, or whatever. And then that person who never wanted to be in that area, doesn't have any knowledge or experience in that area, will suddenly be the head of that area just right. by the fact that he's the only person left. And then right. eventually that person will be in the hot seat and right. do something wrong, and right. then they're gone. So that's sort of kind of how the entire Sea Org is run. It's just randomly people placed in random yeah, places. Yeah, yeah, and there's no there's no testing involved in that. Nobody's going to decide. But here, here's one thing that gives a little clue into that. When Hubbard first started making films at La Quinta back in the late 70s, um, the, 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 the crew really failed very abysmally to produce a product. And so he determined 
that whether that that the reason for their failure had nothing to do with the lack of training or the lack of talent, but that it was a spiritual deficit, that they were spiritually uh, de deficient, and that if he fixed them spiritually, they would all of a sudden be good filmmakers. This is why, and I've spoken about this, and it's a different show. This is why he he developed Superpower. Because, and key to life yeah, and, and RP, false purpose uh, rundown right, and, and the purification rundown right, was to and fix endless, pe yeah, fix endless amounts of almost the entirety of everything in Scientology that's trying right. to fix people who are flat ball bearings in Scientology. Yeah, yeah. Almost all of those were tested on Golden Era Productions as the guinea pigs. Oh, yeah to establish that yeah. this is a workable thing that we're going to do because we put these guys through it and then they managed to crank out a very very crappy film afterwards so we're yeah. going to call it a success yeah with a gun <laughs> with a gun held to their yeah. head hey but mark did you notice you, i just want you to weigh in on this that the one exception to the one area that was almost uh, uh, immune to that was the core shoot crew meaning like even though we got we got in trouble and we got sex checks and we got ball con, you know, our pay doc and all kinds of things. But he couldn't he had to be very careful about dismantling the shoot crew. Like me, cameraman, well, yeah. uh, makeup artist. Well, because be that was a very um it would be so disruptive to But it was also sort of like a very um honed machine that what got working. Yeah. And taking any one piece of it away could make the whole thing fall apart. Yeah, like the cameraman, I don't like no cameraman ever went to the RPF that I can remember. A, a couple of I know one that No, actually that's not true. That's well, not true. What do you mean? Now, the first one that I replaced, he didn't go to the RPF, but he he became assigned the what was it? Dumpster IC. And then he became Are you talking about Joe? Joe, yeah. Joe he, was the um, trees I see. No, but before that, temporarily. Oh, I think he was a sanitation engineer. Yeah, yeah he was a, a dumpster I see. I, <laughs> dumpster I, I, emptier guy. No, yeah. uh, Miscavige made a little badge for him. Said dumpster I see. Something like I, that. And then yes. I think Mark Fisher became the deputy dumpster I see before he left. Yeah, <laughs> there was a lot of people that. Yeah, so I take it all back. That nobody was nobody was safe. I take it back. So. Well. That was also before it was a real well-oiled machine. That was when it was still kind yeah, of messed true. up yeah. at that point. It wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't working when it got when you showed up, and even I don't even think until um, Barbara, who was the Shuku chief, when she got taken off, it was still yeah. kind of hit or miss on if they could get stuff done. But also Barbara. there was Barbara well, Mace. Yeah, the only person at, at the base that was shorter than Miss Gavage. I, was she shorter? Maybe she was. Yeah, yeah she, she was probably shorter. was. She's, she was like four eleven. <laughs> but I, I don't. I, I'm not making fun of her height. I'm just yeah, saying but statistically. She, she was, was a very small uh, female compared to most everybody else. And but very she was nervous. About the same size. Very nervous. <laughs> very high energy. Very no high strung. She <laughs> yes. was. She was. She's still there. This. Oh yeah, I, I know. She's in editing. Do you know? Do you know Mark? Did you ever see a Living in Oblivion? It's, uh, Absolutely, it's like, Steve Buscemi. Yeah, okay. Huh? Peter Dinklage. No, no, no. Uh, was he the? No, he was the dwarf, Peter Dinklage, in Living on Oblivion. Are you he, kidding me? Of course he was the dwarf. He must have been like twenty or so. He must. It was. Little... I think it was his first thing he did. Yeah, so it was a film that was real popular with me because a lot of what went on in it reminded me of Gold, and so it I was bought... Gold. It was. It was, and it was actually they had more crew than Gold had on yeah, their shooter when they there shot were these that movie. Great lines in it, like "Don't drink the milk." Yeah, <laughs> craft service. They had craft services. We didn't have even have craft services, yeah, even with were, batter yeah. milk. But they had this really crazy, this very quirky, not so uh, assistant director, yes. uh, who was the would be the corollary role of this person we're talking about. And Barbara used to do these things like when you're about to shoot, like everybody tweaks the lighting guys, tweak the lights, the costume guys tweak the tweak. The, the costumes, the makeup people tweak the makeup, oh, like like just nervously to the somebody chases them away and says, okay, we're, you know, we're going on camera, and 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 uh, Barbara one day, she yelled, some people kept jumping in, and she she needed to call the shot, and she said, no jumping in and tweaking in, and I yes. kid you not, that, that same was, yes. it was in the living in oblivion. Yes, like it, it, it was like life imitating. No art. more tweaks. Yeah, no she more said, no tweaks. more tweaking. <laughs> yeah. And this Barbara was always saying no more tweaking. But my favorite line, my favorite Barbara Mace line was 
we would have to stop shooting at dinner time when we we're on the base because dinner's dinner. And if dinner's at five o'clock and that bell goes off, you don't go, you're going to eat. If you're in the middle of a shot, it doesn't matter. You finish that shot, you go to eat. You pick it up afterwards, right? Yeah. So I was like, no, we're going to get this shot. We need one more take. So we went a few minutes later and Barbara yelled, okay, guys, come on, hurry up. We're eating into dinner. <laughs> And I just we're eating into we're eating dinner. into dinner, and that was just like the best mixed metaphor I think I've ever heard in my entire <laughs> life. So anyway. oh my goodness, but yes, yeah, so yes, yeah, so they back to the film. Yes. they talk so, about yeah. that we're testing. Um, they they bring up this thing about we should maybe we'll ha we'll develop that one day, and but it was never ever done. Which for is sure. what? Which is what? I'm sorry. The or aptitude was, test to see where people. Oh yeah, yeah, should yeah, be yeah, yeah. That line was absolutely insane. Like. I looked at that and I went, oh, my God, they're, you know, I'm, I'm, I get these guys coming on my crew. You know, some of them are. They're like in props. They're like, what, they are so. And then I hear they were busted from some int post. And yeah, that they, they were... actually actually did really well on that post. Yeah. But they got busted off of that post and then put in as props. And they're like, you know, they, 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 you need a bottle of whiskey. So you get a bottle of whiskey and it says whiskey on it. You yes. know? And you're like, no, that's not how you do a prop. So yeah. it's just like crazy shit. So that would happen yes. once. And when I saw that line, when I heard that line, oh, maybe someday we'll develop these tests. And I'm just like, yeah, you definitely should. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I wonder. So then um, who else does he see? Well, one of, for me, the more memorable ones is, uh, well, they're all memorable. When he goes to see the chaplain, oh, he goes to see the chaplain right. about how, and, and it played by Michael Roberts, and uh, who we played, he played the chaplain a lot. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of, you know, having a, a you know, a black guy who's a, a kindly grandfatherly like it's a little I hate to say it, but it's a little, you know, like Uncle Remus from, you know, Song in the South. It's a little bit of that stereotyping, right, that you would have. Always. Well, I was going to say there is a very um, there's a stigma that Scientology has that there's no um, diversity. There's no racial diversity. Yeah. In Scientology. Any it's, chance it's, to show it. It's like ninety nine percent white. And in the films. Yeah the films that were done by Hubbard were 100% white. Yeah. And so it, 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 it was must, a definite effort yeah, to yeah. try to get as yeah. many people. Yeah. There was at the int base is most of the actors for these extras and background people at the int base um, that, that we shot there were, were Sea Org members. And so there was a, I want to say that during the time I was there, maybe between four and six black Sea Org members at the base. And yeah. they were in, shoots all the time because they yeah. were the only ones we had well except at if the they, base. unless they were in hco then they weren't <laughs> well like gerald yeah like gerald too. gerald wasn't in a, you well, just he was in a lot but he was you, in a lot of the auditing shots when we would do videos we would or, throw or, him in well he was in times. like sea org recruitment posters that's right and po well, they would use him for promotional stuff but they yeah, wouldn't but use him they wouldn't, wouldn't use him for the him films the <laughs> i wouldn't because he's just for one, yeah, for one thing, he's guy weighs three hundred pounds and has his voice is like Michael Jackson. He's like squeaky and high, so it's kind of odd, you know, as a unless you're looking for that as a character. But he was just not somebody you'd want to have around. He's just like he was also sort of a um, the shoe crew were not fans of um, the people that went around and police the Sea Org members because they yeah, make us run yeah. back to our offices and mark our statistic. Like if we were, if it was lunchtime and we had eight shots, it'd be like, hey, I just went in your office and you didn't have your shots marked on your graph. Yeah, I like, didn't, My office battle? is a 20 minute walk from here. Yeah. I'm supposed to go do that every hour? That's yeah. how does that make any sense to do that? Yeah. Yeah. <gasps> or you can stop so, yeah. in the middle of a shoot. Can I yeah. see your battle plan? Yeah. So we weren't, we weren't, um, welcoming, welcoming them into our no, uh, work not, environment yeah, yeah. if we could help it. We were like, no, you know. And that was the other thing about the shoot crew is if we were if we were shooting, it was pretty much understood. You don't mess with the shoot crew if they're shooting because that's that red light's kinda, on. <laughs> that's kind of Dave's little pet project. Yeah. And if that pet project is derailed by some rando trying to get some crew to do something that he yeah. doesn't really care about, Dave Miscavige doesn't care about, yeah. um, it's going to end up, he's going to end up finding out about it. So, and f when we finally built the castle, the castle was a 30 minute walk from any other thing on the property. 
So if yeah. you had to go to the castle, it'd take you 15, 20 minutes to get there and 15, 20 minutes to walk yeah. back. So once that castle was built, we were sort of on our own little production island and we didn't have to right. worry about anybody coming right. over there because it's, yeah. it's 120 degrees in the desert. Nobody want to walk, walk yeah. an hour over yeah. the castle. Yeah, I mean, the only reason that they built it there, they wanted to build it right in the middle of everything, but the ground, that, that whole, all the, most of the property at gold is subject to what's called liquefaction which means if there is a decent earthquake, that whole place is sinking into, like the ground becomes liquid and everything just sinks. And so there they, also is a fault line that runs yeah, yeah. down the middle of the other studio that we shot a bunch of films in, the gym, <laughs> yeah, the yeah. cine gym, has a yeah. fault, fault line that runs directly under yeah. it. So. Yeah, and, and just to add add more, more uh, apocalyptic outcome potential, that property is in what's called a 500-year floodplain. Which means every 500 years, it is under uh, you know 50 feet of water for an extended period of time. So yeah. they couldn't have picked a better place. And but there has been two of those floods since they yeah. owned it. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but those were just knee high. Those the were just hundred year floods. The big one <laughs> that happened not, twice in ten years. Yeah, big one has not come yet. So they kept surveying the land, and they move, and, and and when they had finally found some bedrock, they said we have to build the studio here. So that's that's why it's kind of off on the west side of the property on the actually yeah. the far west side. I think that's the end of the property, right? The west. Uh, they side. have more. Uh, A little more. No? I think their their land goes all the way to what was called uh, Petreo Creek, which was uh -huh. a, like another few hundred yards past the castle, and that's where. Oh, the okay, is. yeah, yeah. But they they went till they hit bedrock, and they said, "Here it is." So anyway, he's so. When Bert Brent, when the commentator, do you remember? He goes in to see the chaplain, and just as he goes in. There is a couple that he's just saying goodbye to a couple that he's been counseling because their marriage is on the rocks. And that was Uwe. Was it Uwe one of them? It was Uwe. So Uwe oh, Stuckenbrock was married to Larice Stuckenbrock, who is Dave's current um assistant or let's just say let's just say co conspirator or or Main, whatever. I don't know. Whatever his what's that uh, some anyway. Kind of, some kind of inappropriate relationship for optically inappropriate for a chairman of the board and his assistant it doesn't look good let's just put it like that and uve used to be the security chief golden era Productions. yeah he replaced jackson when jackson left that's right that's exactly yeah. right i'm pretty yeah. sure that's exactly how it no went that, down. jackson told me that so I, oh, I well there you go yeah yeah but but then uve got um uve became ill and he MS. actually had an he had an he had accident. MS. Well, he had an accident on a motorcycle, mm. and he had some other stuff happen. And then he yeah. was sent to the rehabilitation project force in Los right. Angeles. And then he was diagnosed with MS, and they kept him on the RPF as an RPFer yeah. with MS. And then he in a wheelchair. I ran into him being wheeled out of the complex. Yeah, we. I think we all did. I think we were doing a shoot there. Oh, and yeah. He was coming out, and we were like, right. "What the hell?" And he right. he was skinny, and he was and he was really frail, bad shape. and it was. And it was um, it was heartbreaking to see he was dressed in all black. The RPF wear all black. Yeah. He was dressed in all black and being pushed by another RPFer in a wheelchair. And you're like, if you have multiple sclerosis, how are you still in the RPF? How is this yeah. even? And they believe that if you get rid of those space cooties, the body thetans, <laughs> yeah. that that's going to cure all your yeah. physical ailments. Yeah. Anyway, you just got to get right in your mind if you want to get right in your body. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it, it was, was really sad. And he was, I always liked Duve. But he, but he was getting counseling with, in the film. And with, then he ended up, so when was, he went to the RPF in Los Angeles, Larice divorced him. Well, he, she was ordered to. By well, yeah, Davis. by David Miscavige. Yeah. That's so amazing. That's yeah, so crazy. Yeah. Now, who was, who played his, the wife opposite him? I'm trying to think. Was it Fleur Thomas? No, it um, wasn't Fleur. I don't think Fleur was ever in a film. You don't think um, so? I think it was maybe, remember, what's his name? Abby Ambrom? Adrian. Uh, Adrian. I think Adrian it was Ambrom. Adrian. Yeah, I think you might be right. Right. I think it was Adrian. It was Adrian, Adrian and Uwe. Yeah. Yeah. And, she, and her husband was famous for he was Some famous other, for other story. getting down with Lisa Marie, uh, not Lisa, Priscilla Presley. Yeah, while he was her counselor. <laughs> yeah. He was an RT. He was in Religious Technology Center, and he was assigned to do counseling with like high level celebrities that needed to be 
um, handled very Council. carefully <laughs> by re Religious Technology Center, right. and he went above and beyond to give her extra service. Yeah, because all the of the auditing rooms, they have massage tables in them in case you need an assist. That's right? true. I they do. They all that. have, they have like chiropractic massage tables. I don't think them. all of them. I, have. I think the, well, the fancy ones. In ones. The, the <laughs> ones in, at Qual, at Qual Gold. No, you're right. They, and a matter of fact, we never showed uh, an auditing room in a film that had a massage table in it. Anyway, but, we are going to, we're going down a, a very, very small branch. But I think they there. want us to, Mark. I think our, the audience. <laughs> no. Anyway, I've already told this story because yeah, so Abby, Abby, yeah. Um, his name was Abelardo and he was Cuban. Was he Cuban? I think he was Cuban. He was Cuban or Puerto Rican. He was some Hispanic. He was, and he, he was, was uh... his name was Abelardo and his wife's name was Adrian. And I used to always call her Abby and him Adrian yeah, because it... Adrian was more of a guy's name and yeah. Abby was more of a girl's <laughs> name. So I would be like, Hey, Abby, come here. And she would be like, my name is Adrian. And I would be like, Oh, I'm so sorry. So sorry. And then I'd see yeah. Abby and I'd be like, Hey, Adrian, come here. And he'd be like, I'm not Adrian. I'm Abby. And I'm like, oh, my God, you two are breaking my brain yeah. with these dumb names. <clears throat> Day in the life of Gulnar Productions. <laughs> yeah. So a Adrian and uh, I'm sorry, Uwe and Adrian. Yes. Are just leaving. He's saying goodbye. They're saying thank you very much. And so. Um, uh, so he starts to explain to the commentator that tests can be very important in helping a couple. Right. And now this gives you a, a, a little bit of a keyhole into the, the level to which the church will interfere with parishioners lives like they want to get in every aspect of your life. If you had an argument with your wife, they want you down at the org and they want to be going over the shit with you because there might be a way that they can make some money off of it because. Oh, 100 percent. Maybe you need some counseling. So he pulls out this test Now you're going to remember this, Mark. I'm sure you're going to have something to say about this. There's a thing in Scientology called a comlac, right? Yeah. Comlac. And so this idea and what this is, is like it's if just I a say, delay. It's just a delay. It's a communication delay. Like if you ask somebody a question, like if you say, hey, so when was the last time that you brushed your teeth? And the person says, oh, last night. That's no comlac. If the person says, hmm, wow, when was the last time? So that would be a very long comlac. So basically, these tests can determine a person's comlac. And according to the chaplain, people with similar comlag should be paired up together. Yes. Where when you get a person with a short comlag and a person with a long comlag, so they 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 they're don't incompatible. Clash. They're yes. incompatible. Yes. Like it's worse than if one of them voted for Trump and the other voted for Biden. Like <laughs> literally, that would be nothing compared to them having yeah, calm, like doing, having varying lags on answering yeah, questions. Yeah, and probably the number one reason, you know, in the state of California, when people like when Bijou, you know, uh, when she filed for divorce with Danny, she filed due to irre irreconcilable differences, which is like there is only one cause for divorce in California because it's a no-fault state, and it's called Irreconcilable Differences. That is on every divorce. There's no other yeah. one. I think there was a movie titled that. One at Probably. One I mean, you can't say my <laughs> wife cheated. The judge is like, I don't care. <laughs> you have irreconcilable yeah. differences. Yeah, you're, you you're, have differences in regards to her sleeping with other people. That's irreconcilable. Yeah, exactly. So we're good. <laughs> court doesn't want to hear it. So, but the number one, probably, I'll bet we were willing to bet that the number one cause of the breakup of Scientology relationships is that they had incompatible comlag. <laughs> I'm telling you, that is probably number one. I didn't I, even know that that was such a big deal. I mean, I remember we had it in the film, but it was sort of like, okay, whatever, you know, like. Yeah, at the well, base, at the base, it's usually your partner escaped. <laughs> that's it's like I got to get a new wife. My last one took off. You know, that's and that yeah, was or a, they got sent to the RPF. Yeah, or, or they, they got sent to, to yeah. Russia. So yeah, yeah, you know, you're right. And you'd be like, oh, what happened? To, you know, there were times when they would send like a busload of people off in the middle of the night, and you come in right. in the morning and be like. Some of the spouses would be like, I don't even know where. They'd be like, hey, where's Bob? I'm like, I don't know. And be yeah. like, and then you'd find out like during the day, like, oh no, those guys got offloaded to Los Angeles last well, night I, in this the middle might, of the night. This might be sort of a fundamental difference between public Scientology culture and Sea Org culture is that, um, you know, in public culture, you have maybe more, uh, you have different reasons why relationships break up, like because sure. people have incompatible conflict. But I, you know, I, I mean, I knew people at, at Gold who, I mean, but you would also use this to judge people, 
you know, because Scientology is very judgy, but you would also judge people on their communication lag. Like, okay, so if you were ever in a conversation with David Miscavige, what's the worst thing you could do? N either not answer or take too long to answer. Exactly. Or answer, there was a third, was answer, <laughs> uh, give an answer to a question he didn't ask. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So he'd be yeah. like, when's it going to be done? And then you're so, well, then there was a backup on this. And then there was a, some yeah. guy, this had it. He's like, I just asked when it was going to be done. I didn't ask for your life story. No, you know, you're like, right. You're right. What, 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 where is it? Is it done? Yes or no? Yeah, exactly. But yes, the, the, the answering with other answers was just a, you know, I need to riff until while I think of a good answer. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You're like, uh, we're, we're gonna, we're, we're about to hit a uh, uh, critical impact here with David yeah. Miscavige. You better have a good answer. Ready. Yeah. It's, it's like during those conversations is when a lot of people get thrown under the bus because, you know, it's like in a conversation like that, one of the answer might be, well, it wasn't me. It was him. That's a really quick answer that would tend to get you out of trouble. Yeah. So there is a lot of that. So then we have, I, I, I mean, that brings us pretty much to the close of the film. And I mean, I, I, I'm not sure what else there is to say about this. No, that, I mean, that he, he basically takes you through all these different things. And it really does sort of explain that Scientology knows that there's sort of these things happening and there's reasons why people leave and they're trying to patch up these reasons and and this film i think is one of the more overt examples of how they lay out that they're doing this and if you if you like you said earlier if you're if you're drinking the kool-aid it doesn't seem that out no of it place. doesn't at all okay i just looked at my notes and there is absolutely one thing we left out which is crucial yeah. and that's when he goes and he talks to the dp because he, the D, the director of processing is one of the key players. The D, director of processing, the, the, the tech sec, the, the what is yeah, that? they're the ones that kind of figure out what counseling or um, training. Yeah, that you're person. talking like you're talking like uh, you know a team going to the Super Bowl. You know, just to stay in motif, a team going to the Super Bowl. You've got your head coaches, and then you've got your your defensive coach and your offensive coach, and you've got so these other very critical roles. So the director of processing would be one of those roles. So he goes to talk to him about testing, and this is really critical. I, I don't have a show and tell on this, but there is a book called The Science of Survival, and in that book there's a chart, a big, big chart, called the chart of human evaluation. Oh and my God! This yeah. chart I don't is, know why no one's done a video on that. Well, well, let's do it. That's <laughs> the, a crazy one. The heart chart of you, a, a lot of you, uh, everybody's heard about the tone scale. Everybody's heard about the tone scale. Is a, it's it's the fake science. Uh, it's the science of hate. It's the rationalization for why the LGBTQ community is quote unquote aberrated. Why it's a perversion to love somebody who's not of your own sex. All of this kind of stuff is, is from the tone scale. Okay, the book covering the tone scale is called Science of Survival. And that tone scale, which we've seen as a vertical linear scale, it's broken down into two dimensions, into three dimensions really, in this chart where you have all these characteristics uh, and then all of these tone, these quote unquote tone levels. And you can look on there at 1.1, which is, you know, this tone level that he says, you know, the gay people are, are exhibit, and it'll give you all the behavior characteristics, you know, that they're sadistic with children. That's one of his accusations. Yeah. About, yeah. Also the, that they smell, they have a smell to them. This particular smell. Yes. Right. So now he goes in to see the director of processing. This is crazy. This was the first thing when I started to my, my critical thinking came back and I thought about this one thing in this film. I was like, oh, my God, this is such a scam and it's hiding in plain sight. Right. It's like that line from uh, User Suspects when when when, uh, when he, he says, sees you know, it, Orca, da, da, he da. says the greatest <laughs> trick that the devil ever played on this world is convince us that he doesn't exist. Yes. And, uh, it's the way that he hides in plain sight. I mean, the greatest trick that L. Ron Hubbard ever played in the world is to convince us that he was a good guy. So, and he did a really good job of that to a lot of people. So it's a, the, the director of processing is going through all these different tests. You know, remember the dollar bill test? He said, well, and then there's the dollar bill test. This is the dollar, you take a dollar bill and then yes. if you can grab it, I obviously it's much reaction harder time. Here. He goes reaction, reaction time. time. Oop, see that? I missed it. We'll do it with a post-it. Anyway, <laughs> that's one of the tests. Try it with a dollar bill. It's not, it's like, 
there's all so he goes through all these tests, but he says now the real reason we do these tests is so we can get the guy to walk and talk and spot him on this chart. So yes. basically what he's saying is all of these tests are bullshit. So we can They're know all, what our marks where our marks right, are at on the chart. We can know where our mark is at on this chart. Yeah. Because once we spot him on this chart, then we know how to deal with him. Yeah, and that's, that's right. just like I, I look that's at that right. now. I it totally makes... forgot about yeah. that sequence because yeah. they had all these sort of Rube Goldberg contraptions and different. Oh yeah, things he does I... like a walk the line thing, yeah. and yeah. he does this, and he, there's one he does with a coin where he flips a coin or does something. That's crazy right. Thing. I forgot all about yeah, a whole them. bunch of other tests. That he's they never he's like, there's other kind of tests you can do. And then yeah, that's exactly. when he shows all these different things. Yeah, and then he says they're all bullshit. We just want to get the guy walking and talking so we can measure him up and figure yeah. out how to fleece him. We can basically. interact with him. We can yeah. talk with him. We can yeah, see all his calm is. lag. That's we can see is. all these different things. Yeah. That's so crazy. Oh, here's a person. Um, we do have a few little uh, uh, comments here that I wanted to bring out. This test yeah. is an ASFAB. That's this assessment test they do in the um, in the military to see what the aptitude was of it. I think that's the thing. Ob O'Brien, thank you for that. Um, the um, the other um, one here. Let's see what else we got. We got. Oh no, Adrian. Adrian. Oh no, Mark thinks my name is dumb. No, no. I was talking about these specific people. It was just two people that were married to each other. They had the same last name, and they had two female first names. I know Adrian from Rocky. Adrian. I know there's females named Adrian. Um, it was just a dude's name was Abby. Okay, that is unusual. And also, his real name was Abby Lardo, which I've never heard any other person in my entire life named Abby Lardo. Maybe that's a common name down there. Um, Mama Duke says, uh, where has Aaron been? I don't know. Did Aaron, Aaron's not doing videos? Um, I talked to Aaron like two hours ago on the phone. Um, he's, I think he did a video yesterday. I don't know. I, uh, I think he's going to LA for a protest or something. Um, don't worry about Aaron. Aaron's fine. Um, he's hey, wait been, a minute. He, somebody, somebody said, hold on, Mark. Uh, yeah. Uh, can you put this up, Lydia Van Stretchclaw? Oh, okay. Hey, I there love you, Lydia. I'm glad to have you here, but I have to I have to point out that uh -oh. you your correction you quite one track mind, but was that quote from Devil's Advocate? No, that was from the user suspects. You can Google No, it's it. at the very end of the movie when um that guy is in the Kevin in his Spacey the police guy. Yeah, when he's in the office and Kevin Spacey has just left and he's right. kind of re recollecting the whole story and he's looking at a notice board in his office that has every single, it ties the entire story together and the bottom of his cup right. said Orca and that, and one of the things he said was Orca and yeah, then I all these- I think it said Kobayashi, but whatever, it doesn't matter. I remember the film really well, but um, my point is, is that, no, it is, it's, uh, okay. It says Maybe Orca. It, Trust me. Maybe it's said Orca. Um, <laughs> yeah. So listen, Kobayashi might have been on there as well. Yeah. So we should do Trivial Pursuits, a uh, uh, film, tri film like, trivia. Film trivia. Film trivia. <laughs> it would be really funny. Um, so yeah, it was actually uh, the last. I think it was the last thing that Kevin Spacey said before he left. He says to the to the detective, "You know, the greatest trick that the devil ever played in this world was convincing us that he never existed." And then he leaves, and then the cops start seeing all this shit. Well, that's it. when he's walking. They do, yeah. They're doing close-up on his feet. And as, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. as he's walking down the sidewalk, his limp starts to disappear, and he starts to walk normally. Yeah, and then yeah, he yeah. gets into the car with the like, Kobayashi's yeah. representative yeah. that's been the whole yeah, movie. It's like, a great movie. I mean, it is a great movie. Yeah, so Lydia, I, I appreciate your, your correction. But, yeah. I'm just going to show this just because it's I, I like this OBG Foster person. I, I've seen him posting for days. Can anyone yeah. see my post? Like, I think he thinks he got shadow banned by YouTube or something. I've seen every single time he said, can anyone see my post? So OBG Foster, I'm seeing your posts. I don't know who's not seeing them or if you're not seeing them, but... Um, Sometimes YouTube does stuff in the back end. We don't know why they're doing it. They mess up stuff. It could people be the, lose subscribers the, and you the know, cooties, the body fit and cooties. Space you cooties. Know. YouTube space cooties. Space cooties right. um, Dever Stevo says great scene. Um, great scene in which movie though, Stevo? He's, is, he's uh, talking about Usual yeah. Suspects. Come on. I, know. Um, I just want a little extra backup, Mark. <laughs> yeah. Um, I explained the name. Oh, Abelard. Okay. I explained the name Abelard. I see all the, ex I explained the Abelard, but I didn't see the, uh, I'm sorry. There's so many. Um, Abelardo, a common name, but not here. Maybe. Yeah. 
There you go. I'm I'm open. Ab oh, here it is. Abilardo is the Spanish version of Ablard. Ablard. I've never heard of that either. So yeah. Um, but who, what do I know? What does Aaron say? What do I know? I grew up in a cult. Yeah, I don't know much. I have never heard of no Abelardos until I... I'm I got old. news for you. That's not growing up in a cult center because I grew up in a highly intellectual household with lots of uh, opportunities for education, and I never yeah. heard of it either. So, oh, okay, fine. So there, there you go. go. Um, let's see if we got any other comments here. Oh, here's one from Michelle Carpenter, eminent trouble source. I totally didn't realize y'all were live. Happy Taco Tuesday. Thank you for being dedicated scam busters. Thank you for that, Michelle. We appreciate that. Very generous. Um, there, um, we're going to do, um, we're going to keep doing these until we run out of films and, um, We've got, I think we've done, I think Audience, this is our- whatever happens first. Yeah, or yeah, if you guys stop watching, then I, I you know, I think I would still even do it just yeah, to document I know. it. I think we would <laughs> Like I'm so it. selfish yeah. about just wanting to get everything um, yeah. l documented. Look at this person. This person posted four times, BYB podcast. Can you see my post? Yeah, I see all four or five of them, six or seven or eight. Now we're just being ridiculous people. Yeah, um, it's to your comment if you put up the comment from nerdy girl films yeah uh, let me see if, if i can find that, that do you know the time goes. back if a you... little bit 314 oh geez just a little bit well it's an hour I mean, it's still today oh you well oh i see you're you're in a different time zone so that would be 414 for, for me. me yes exactly <laughs> sorry yeah that's why i'm like oh, that's an hour <laughs> right we have to remember about that um here we go uh, nerdy sorry sorry guys i'm nerdy girl films she said 413 and no i don't have that one well i'm gonna read it um okay it says, really 314 nerdy girl film says i could listen to behind the scenes stories about Scientology films all day long. Thank you very much for that. I think that's a good reason why we'll keep doing them. Yeah, and also um, realize, I, I realize this, this might not be somebody's cup of tea, but it might be someone else's cup of tea. Yeah. So that's why we, where I really just wanna document everything and I wanna, um, I have not been able to do this video series on the films because I didn't have another person that was worked on <laughs> yeah. the films. So as soon as Mitch kind of showed up on the radar, I told him right off the bat when we started oh, yeah. talking. Yeah. At some point, we when you when you are ready, we should do a series on the films. And then yeah. it was sort of, you know, okay. And then we got ready and now we're doing it. So yeah. we've done seven of these so yeah. far and I think we've covered eight films because one of them was a twofer and there's going right. to be two more videos that will be twofers. Right. Like they'll cover two films because there's a, a, right. a drill film that's just an edited version of the main film. Right. Um, but other than that, we've got about 20 more of the, I'd say give or take around 20 more of these at least that we're going to do. And yeah, then- I've there's also, Mark, there's also films that aren't even in this series, like Orientation. I understand. That's why I'm saying. It's at okay. least 20 that we will do, and we may do more. And who knows? There may We may get another person to join in that was also on these films. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying yeah, it, or it even could like, Even if not necessarily the films, like today, we were talking about this, like Aaron was, he was a tech sec, so he knows all about how this thing was run at the org level. So, That's you know, true. it's also an opportunity for people to come on who worked at that level and go, oh, yeah, I was part of that whole scam. Yeah. And, he, and here's how we ran it. So, it's well, like, Aaron may just do a video on this video, regardless of whether we're cooperating so. or involved either way. He'll just yeah, go exactly. through and clip it and do one on his channel. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Um, and which is fine with me. I'm, yeah. you know. I, I'm just Although I don't care either. As long as you spell my name right, <laughs> you can say anything you Did want. Did I spell about your it. name wrong? No, of course oh, not. Oh, um, as long as you no, give me I'm not credit. saying that was a general statement, Mark. <laughs> I can tell you guys how serious Mark was about doing the series because it was actually Claire who uh, wrote me, Mark was out of town, and she said, oh, by the way, Mark wants to do this series. And the fact that he was out of town working, telling Claire. Oh, I, I did it. Well, because yeah, she said I, I talked like, to Mitch and I was like, make sure you tell him we're doing a film series. That's that's yeah. happening for sooner. That's how whenever, I knew how serious he was. I was whenever like, he's ready because I had kind back? of yeah, I kind of been waiting to do it this whole time, and I was like, yeah. eh, it's no, not going to be ready to do it. That's a one hundred percent valid say. I needed to actually decode enough of this stuff. I needed to pull enough of those culty shards of whatever out of my brain to actually you know fully ingest that red pill 
and you know pop out of it and actually see some of the stuff and then i really started to see it now let me ask you a serious question sure uh, and and if you don't want to answer you don't have to answer yeah I i'll just turn that. my camera off um <laughs> has telling these stories and doing these videos do you think it has um affected your your oh, absolutely your, your mindset or your 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 oh absolutely absolutely okay. absolutely because here's the thing it, it, we all have to hold ourselves accountable i mean some of us worked at the retail level and we were like you know uh, bayonetting babies okay uh maybe that's a little extreme some of us like you and i we were flying in b-52s and we were napalming a village with propaganda you know we all had our different roles but there's no way that you could have been as long as i was you were in or even i was in was a bit longer and not have you know it doesn't matter what happened to you you have to hold yourself accountable so for me this has been a way of saying hey look i did these things like i i made this film about this con and yeah, yeah we're going to share it with you and it has a lot of humor and so forth but it was really a con and it pressured people out of their money and into uh, spending time that they didn't have. And they ended up trading their pure core identity for this fake narrative. So this is a chance. This for me, I mean, we don't call it that, but this is like after apartheid, you know, this is the Truth and Reconciliation Committee where we're all coming forward and we're saying, yeah, this is what happened. This is what we did. You know, it's, it's that's just as important as, as you know, telling the story of abuse is the stories of what of our participation is is i think those are equally as important so it has definitely helped me in that in that and, and you know plus i've always been a creative that's dealt with media so you know it's kind of like yeah i i okay so when i first got out that when i spoke with mike render i know you didn't expect this long answer no no yeah i no, no mitch i asked the question because i wanted to hear the answer Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> when I first was willing to talk, you know, when I got, uh, 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 you know, uh, and even then I sat on my sofa for a year and a half playing Overwatch and thinking about, you know, can, wait, does that, can you read on the small? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That thing. Um, you know, but I talked to Mike, uh, I think when I called him, uh, uh, Mike Render. I, yeah, Mike, Mike Rinder, I, I called Mike because yeah. I knew Mick really well. Like I knew Mark really well. And I'd worked with, I'd done projects with Mike and I'd worked on you know, the LRH Life Exhibition with him and the Industry of Death Museum and all kinds of PR things back when he was the uh, working in uh, PR. I did, he was one of the first executives that I really got to know. And um, I called him up and he said, Mitch, you don't have, and, and I just needed to talk to somebody who was like, ah. So I called Mike and he said, Mitch, you have no idea how powerful you are because of what you did. How much, he didn't say that. He said, how much power you have. That's very different than how powerful you are. And he said, because you could take what you did for them and use it against them. And they know that. So, you know, a year and a half later, I got off my sofa because I really wasn't that good at video games. I thought I'd start streaming on Twitch as WOG, world's oldest gamer. But, wow but i thought that was you really, really do you weren't joking you really played overwatch oh for a year oh, i still play occasionally i'm pretty good dude so. wow there's another scientology guy an older gentleman who plays a um it's like a race car game where you um bounce balls around oh yeah i, I don't know that one no i, I only i like i like shooters where you're killing First person not, shooters yeah but where you're killing not humans like i hate call of duty because you're killing oh. people and they're like dying with a Mexican accent. It's just really horrible. Okay, so like Halo or like an alien. Oh, Halo, exactly. I was a yeah. huge Halo fan and okay. then Overwatch. <laughs> oh is, you know, it's like Purple Blood. You know, I had no idea of this, Mitch. Oh, yeah, this is no. you're telling me things that I had no clue. That, oh that no, was I was place. a huge favorite. Really? really funny, really funny story. Before I left Scientology, when they'd said I was back at Gold and Danny was at Gold because, you know, he lost a lung and and COVID. You know, he was Danny not, Sherman. Yeah, he a okay. few years ago he had a lung taken out, so they were worried about his health. So he they sent him back up to Goldwood, especially when COVID hit. You're not probably not going to survive COVID with one lung. But so I had been doing a bunch of research, right? Because I was honestly trying to promote Scientology, and and we were being clobbered so badly. I mean, I don't know if you ever thought about this, Mark, but if you count the number of really slick pages 
on the internet, like actual IP, like, like, uh, uh, you know, real pages, landing pages, websites. If you yeah. count them up, I'm, I'm willing to bet you that Scientology has more sites and more pages than any organization in the world. Cause I was there. Oh when yeah. They, no, I, I've, I have on my channel. Those are the very first lists of videos I did in 2008 is when I started this channel. That's when we started developing the channels. And I have a list of all the domain names that David Miscavige had and all the hate sites and the uh, PR sites. And there's thousands and thousands it's and thousands. Beyond, they hired, they literally hired the best people in the world and were paying hundreds of thousands of dollars a month to have their stuff properly architected for reputation management purposes and search engine optimization purposes. And the, the aggregate channels on YouTube, which basically cost nothing and are done out of love by all of us, are so many times more popular and more visited than anything they've ever it's done. Ridiculous. Yeah, we, it's ridiculous. We it's spend, great. I would say we spend maybe uh, not even a thousandth, not even a ten thousandth of what they spend for for oh, much more value. No, it's, it wouldn't even show up on a on a graph because they're yeah. spending. It would be infinitesimal compared to the dollars, millions, millions and millions of dollars on ads. If you don't believe us, search either one of our names. Well, search my name. I'm not sure about Mitch. Yeah, have they done any? They haven't done no, anything, no, no, right? Oh, no, nothing. They're, okay. They're, if you search my name, you're gonna to get. You're going to yeah. get their main site. I think it's called Who is Mark Headley? And they have another Marty Rathman site, which is kind of weird that they still maintain that, even though he works for them. But they maintain a, a Marty website that is attacking Marty. And Marty maintains his websites. Marty Rathbun maintains his ra uh, websites that attack Scientology. Yeah, but on, really weird. Both on, the, uh, bo on both of those websites, there's yeah. the opposite version of, right. of, of Marty. But, but I, I'm just talking about the positive stuff, like every church in the world, every mission yeah. in the world, all the organizations, all of the, the social betterment, all, all of that stuff. And there, there's, you know, there's subordinate pages and on and on and on and on. And on. It's absolutely insane. I don't remember why I brought that up. But yeah, I was where you were compiling that list. I was on the other side, pushing, helping to push all that shit out there. Uh, but uh, yeah, so anyway. Okay, let me show you this just so you know. Kobayashi is on the mug. Orca is on the paper that's on the bulletin board. Well, I was right. Kobe, when he You're turns exactly the mug right. over, because it, yeah. Kobayashi porcelain, I think I don't, is what it's I don't like. consider that a win that I'm right. It's just, I, I, this person paid me $2. Oh, yeah. I'm going to show the comment. Okay, okay? Good. Yeah, because. Um, well, the bucks, bucks something. It's just the fact that, oh, but here's 30%. the thing. I forgot the worker thing. You forgot the mug thing. Exactly. I That's knew them both, but I just didn't know which was which. That's why um, we, can't, we can't ever be on the same uh, Triple O Pursuits. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be, be like, fair. I'm telling you, it he said Orca. Fair. No, yeah. no. He said Kobayashi. No, yeah. I think I think he might have said both. Yeah. Um, in the biz, thoroughly enjoy your production stories. Keep them coming. There you go. I'm telling Thank you, people. You. Um, appreciate that, Shannon or Shenanan or Shenanigans. Shenanigans. I get yeah. it. Um, yeah. Thank you for uh, tuning in today, guys. Here, let's do um, let's do a little bit of housekeeping here. Um, we've got. If you're watching on my channel, go over to Mitch's channel. Make sure you could give him a like. If you like the content we're cr uh, cranking out, then click like. I mean, it's it's free. Um, and if you want, you could even subscribe which is also free right. and um, that's a value. If I, if you ask me, that's a pretty decent value. Um, and then um, we've got uh, oh, this one other thing. There's a big thing happening in Clearwater where um, Mark Bunker is running for Clearwater uh, city council. And we're trying to promote that and make sure that he wins in, in order right. for Clearwater to bust out of uh, Scientology's grips. They've got to get um, more people in the, in the local government and the city council that are aware of what is really going on with Scientology. And Mark Bunker's one of those people. So. Yeah, I, I think people don't understand that what David Miscavige was just trying to do is he sees Clearwater as, as Scientology, Salt Lake city. He's doing what he's doing, what, 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 uh, you know, um, uh, what's his name? The you know the Jeff. Mormon the Mormon guy who founded yeah. Salt Lake City, uh, Brigham Young. He's trying to do there like he go. doesn't care about trafficking people or whether there's people in the churches or not. He just wants to establish such a powerful beachhead that you'll never be able to get rid of them. So it's really important uh, to support Mark Bucker. Yeah, and um, and and if you guys don't, maybe I should do. We should. 
I'll, I'll have to talk to Mark about that. Um, but there might be uh, other stuff we can do too to, to support mm -hmm. him. But if you if you want to support Mark Bunker, it doesn't matter. You can be anywhere in the United States to help support his campaign. Right. Just go to markbunker2024.com and you can do that. Um, I think that's it for us today. I think yeah, uh, great. thank you guys think... for tuning in. I've got another um, video later today. If you're watching or listening to this on the podcast, um, thank you very much for that. If you want to see our faces, you can go to YouTube and uh, watch this there. But um, I've got another video coming up for those who are uh, watching live today. I've got a video coming up with uh, Mike a little bit later today. Nice. And we are going to talk about, uh, we're actually going to talk about Marty Rathbun. And oh, nice. He, nice. And he has My old friend. New, he has a new job. And so wow. we're going to cover out what his, what cover what his new job is. And we're also going to take you and we're going to tell you some behind the stuff, uh, behind the scenes stuff that no one has ever talked about before. Oh. And um, sort what of how that, this. Mark? What time is that? that? When it's is, going when to is... be at it's going to be at 6 p.m. Mountain time. So Mountain time. So whatever that's time that is. In your OK, time good. Uh, OK. Yeah, I got to watch that because Marty is you know, a dear old friend of mine, not. Marty is a person I wouldn't walk across the street to piss on if he was on fire. Wow. Uh, Tell us yeah. how you really yeah, feel. Yeah, yeah. No, for <laughs> sure, real. So I'm definitely going to be in the chat on that one. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Well, tune in later, guys. Thank you, everyone, who joined us today. Yeah, and sure. uh, we will see you uh, on the next one. Uh, until next time. Thank you very much, guys.